you ever feel like you're all alone? Do you ever wish that God was with us? God was with Mary when she saw the angel. She was in awe. But God's presence helped her to say yes. God was with Joseph when he found out about Mary's child. But God gave him confidence to take Mary as his wife. The angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds. They were terrified. But God was with them to show them good news of great joy. God was with the wise men when they came before Jesus to bow down and worship Him. And even for us today, we know that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Well, today we uh, continue on with this message series uh, that I'm calling Emmanuel, God with us. And sometimes I think we all need to have that assurance that God is with us in all parts of our lives, in all the weird parts of our lives. Some of the glorious times and some of the hardest times, we need to be reminded that God truly is with us. Well, as we've been going through this series of uh, God with us, we've been taking a look at different situations in which we know God is with us. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at God is with us in our joy. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, that's kind of obvious, don't you think? But is it? Is it obvious? Do we really give God the glory even in our times of great joy? I hope you'll see the common thread throughout this series is we are never alone no matter where we are in our lives. So far we've talked about the fact that God is with us in our awe when we are, we are surrounded by his awe and wonder. And we also know that God is with us in our valley even though the valley can seem like a lonely place. Today we're going to be talking about about uh, missing our God even in the time of joy in our lives. Well, let's see if we can explain this a little bit further. Before we get too deep into this, I want us to think of this question. Are you ready? Big question. Who do we give glory? Who to whom we do, we do we give glory even when it's a joyful time? In other words, think of a time where you are just so full of joy, everything is going well, uh, it could be one of the most amazing times of your life. Do you stop and give God the glory for all of that? Or do we just assume, as many Americans do, that honestly, if good things come my way, it's because I deserve it. Hey, have I earned it all? Of course, it's all about me. Instead of turning it around and saying, even in our time of joy, we need to give God all of the glory. If we expect to be, have God with us in our deepest, darkest, most awful times in the valley, we better expect joy uh, that God is with us even in our times of great joy. Well, let's take a look at uh, some examples. First of all, let's talk about uh, uh, joy, and let's talk about what I consider the difference between joy and happiness. I would say that joy is more than an emotion, okay? Uh, I'm looking out at you, I'm wondering if you get it. Do you know what I mean? Joy is more than just simply an emotion, how you happen to feel at the time. I would say that uh, uh, that would be more like happiness, okay? I would say happiness is one of those uh, emotions that come out of basically a situation. That we're happy with what's going on in our situation. We're out with friends and hey, we're happy. We're, out, we're, we're with family and everything is happy. You might even say it's Christmas time and your kids or grandkids are opening their presents and it's happy. Yet I also don't think that happiness uh, is necessarily the same as joy. That I would say that uh, uh, happiness springs from a situation. Joy springs from something much, much deeper. This has uh, got to be one of my favorite pictures around Christmas. And uh, I think this sums it up a lot, just like this. 
<laughs> Three little kids spelling out the words joy. Do they look very joyful to you? <laughs> In fact, I would say they're probably pretty darn unhappy. But uh, being unhappy, is that the same of not having joy in your life? I would say no. I would say they're different things. Different things entirely. Um, one of the things that I have noticed throughout the years is, uh, maybe you would guess, but I've done a lot of funerals in my days. I've done literally hundreds and hundreds of funerals in my time in ministry. This is something that I have seen time and time again. Not every single funeral, but for the most part, most funerals can be times of joy. I've seen in my own personal experience that people may come in and their situations do not merit them to be happy. In fact, I would say most of the time at a funeral, people are not necessarily happy. They're sad. But that does not rob them of their joy. You see, you can be unhappy with the situation, but the joy can spring from remembering their loved ones. It can come from being together with family, coming together even in the time of sorrow. But also that kind of joy can spring from the good news found in Jesus Christ that this life here is not all there is. And that people can rejoice about their loved one on their way into the presence of the Lord, yet also they're feeling sad because of their own emotions. They will miss them here, and that makes you feel sad, and people can cry, but at the same time, they can turn that into joy because we know the promises of our Lord and Savior. I think there's a difference between joy and happiness. Now, what Jesus gives us should be great joy. I just love this uh, passage from Scripture. Uh, now, this comes from uh, John chapter 15, and uh, the, the, there are certain chapters in the book of John uh, that are just between John and his disciples, right before he is going to be arrested, beaten, whipped, and humiliated, and eventually hung on a cross to die. And these are some of the last words that Jesus said. He says this, As my Father has loved you, so, or, as my Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. That sounds pretty good, right? But listen to these final words that Jesus ties together. He says this, I have told you this. I have told you what it means to remain in my love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Think about the irony of this statement. If you see joy as the same thing as happiness, it would be something like this. Hey guys, guess what? I'm about ready to suffer immensely and die on the cross. But God loves me and I love you. So hey, that's great joy. If we look at that from a human perspective, from a selfish, personal perspective, it doesn't make any sense, you see. But if you look at it from the point of view, from Jesus Christ, he says, this is not the end. You're going to enter into some sad times, but I pray in this that your joy may be complete. One of the things that I find to be some of the most greatest joys I can think of is that uh, the idea that great joy comes from good news. Right? A couple of examples. Let's use a story of Christmas. We have uh, your kids or maybe your grandkids gathered around the Christmas tree, and now it's time for them to open presents, okay? That can be a happy occasion. Yeah, the kids open up a present. Yay, this is what I've always wanted, right? Yay! But it also can be a joyful occasion. 
Now, from a parent or a grandparent's perspective, you get joy by seeing your kids or grandkids happy. Do you see the difference? In fact, uh, when, you're, when your kids or your grandkids were born, my guess is that was a time of great joy because that's good news. And from the kids' perspective, they open up a present and they see what they've always wanted. Yay! You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you this story that uh, I'm not here to make fun of my mom at all. My mom was a wonderful, wonderful woman, but she got all carried away by Christmas. I think I probably told you stories of... Uh, when I was a kid, uh, she would uh, get a, a pair, of, uh, a whole bag of tube socks and wrap them up individually so the kids could have something to open. Instead of just opening one pack of socks, it could open up six, uh, six packages all with one pair of socks in it. Isn't that cool? So when uh, all of a sudden the, the time came when I started having kids, so she had grandkids, oh my goodness, how great is that? And they were at a time where they were financially a little better off than they were when I was a kid. So she piled upon them gifts like you would not believe. I don't know if she spent like a ton of money on them, but there sure were a ton of presents. Now remember, my kids were pretty small at the time, and it got to the point where my kids got bored opening up presents. <laughs> Oh, brother. I hope what we gather from that is this. Joy does not come from the presence. Amen? Joy comes from the giving and the receiving. My kids would have gotten as much joy from one nice present that they always wanted than having a whole tree full of presents. The good news comes from or the true joy comes from good news. And when a kid opens up a present that they've always wanted, isn't that really a symbol of our love to the kids? 50 presents doesn't make it 50 times as great. Now let's take a look again at the shepherds, okay? The story of the shepherds brings great news, of, or good news of great joy. And there were shepherds living out in their fields nearby, keeping a watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Wouldn't you be terrified? Anyone think they would be terrified if they're out in the dark and uh, tending their sheep and all of a sudden, oh, an angel of the Lord and the glory of the Lord shining upon them? I would be terrified too. Uh, in fact, you know something? Even if I weren't out in the field tending my sheep at night, if I was just uh, at home watching TV and all of a sudden, oh, the angel of the Lord came, I think I'd be a mite freaked out too. You know what I mean? But now think of it in this term. So they go from absolute terror to then the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be great joy for all the people. In essence, it's that good news that brings the great joy into our lives. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, another thing that I've done a lot in my days in ministry are weddings, right? Anyone here really happy and joyful at weddings? Anyone think that? Yeah. You ask uh, any given pastor how many times uh, that they feel really joyful at a wedding, you'll probably get maybe 20% who'd say, yeah, weddings are awesome. <laughs> oh, man. In fact, I was at a pastor's meeting about, uh, I don't know, two or three months ago, and someone said, is it really nasty of me to say that I'd rather do four funerals to every one wedding? <laughs> Now, here's what people think. They say, does that sound nasty? Hey, funerals are sad, mournful, oh, really sad occasions, and weddings are really joyful. If you take a look at it from an emotional point of view, funerals can often be so filled with joy because of the reasons we talked about earlier. Weddings can often be so much about me that we may not always receive that good news that God loves you, that it is by the power of the living God that brings two people, two separate individuals, and makes them one flesh. That's good and glorious. 
And I tell you, at the weddings where I've done, where uh, anyone ever seen this uh, TV show, I've only seen like five minutes of it and I had to turn it, I couldn't stand it anymore. It was called Bridezillas. Anyone ever heard of that thing? About two people, well, okay, if you haven't seen it, Lord bless you all, I, I mean that. Uh, it's basically a, a whole TV show about uh, people who get married and the brides are like, rah, rah. And you know, just watching that show makes me think there's no joy there. Because then it's all about the celebration and not about the reason why we celebrate. It sounds something like Christmas, doesn't it? You ever notice that sometimes we can get so bogged down at Christmas around the celebration, we can forget or lose track or put aside the reason why we celebrate. The reason I say this is because I saw a survey done not too long ago. I, I forgot what it was. It was on Facebook, you know, so it's got to be true, right? That the level of depression at Christmas, maybe you've seen, I see some people already nodding their heads like they've already seen this. The level of depression at Christmas time skyrockets. And somehow I get in my mind the idea that we think that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. And so you put your standards pretty high. So we, we try to make it the most wonderful time of the year. Instead of us realizing this, are you ready for this, my friends? Instead of realizing it already is the most wonderful time of the year, not because of the celebration, but because of the incarnation of God. God became flesh. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And that is enough to celebrate. That is enough to make it joyful in and of itself. We don't need to make it joyful. The best we can do, my friends, is make it happy. But if all of a sudden it isn't happy and we've lost sight of joy, what do you have left? What do you have left? The good news is what brings great joy. This is one of my favorite uh, parts about this story as well, in that of the shepherd story is this. Good news can often drive us to share the joy. When we have good news and we have great joy in our hearts, that can often drive us to share that good news wherever we go. And to me, that is one of the most glorious things about this story. I just love the story where it goes like this. Then the angel uh, left them, and they went up to heaven. And the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and let us see these things which the Lord has made known to us. I can only imagine, here we are. Let's see if we can rewind this just a little bit, okay? Let's think of it like this. So we have the shepherds. They're out in the fields. They're just uh, checking out their sheep, making sure nothing happens to them. Dead of night, totally dark, uh, no street lights, nothing like that. And then all of a sudden, oh, the angel of the Lord appears and says, hey, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. And then the whole heavenly host comes and they start rejoicing and praising God. Next thing you know, they leave and they say, hey, let's head over to Bethlehem and see this little child. They leave their sheep behind to go see Jesus Christ. The one thing they have to do is watch their sheep, but when Jesus comes, they have to go. Isn't that great? So they get up, leave their sheep, and they take off uh, to Bethlehem. They find, they look around till they finally find this baby uh, laying in a manger with this young couple. And they rejoice. And then they do one of the coolest things that ever happened in the Christmas story. Then they do this. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Mm. Is 
Has anything happened in your life where the Lord said, this is what's going to happen? And you think, nah. And then the Lord comes along and makes it even more joyful. The Lord comes along and does exactly what the Lord originally told you he would do. Sometimes we, we get freaked out by that a little bit. I wish I could tell you all the instances in my life where the Lord has followed through just the way he promised. Actually, that's happened quite a bit in this church. Did you know that? Sometimes you can miss it. You know, one of the things that we started about, uh, when did we start the water filters candy? Two, three years ago? Three years ago? Three, three or four years ago? That was just one of these weird little things where we decided, okay, these water filters, wouldn't that be great? You know, they're really meant for camping, kind of yuppie campers who go out there and want to purify water out of a stream and uh, try to make that into a really cool mission to go help people who didn't have clean water. And uh, at that first meeting, we thought, hey, a kit for 50 bucks, who wouldn't want to participate in that? Maybe let's set a high, a high lofty goal, all right, to say maybe, maybe just if we cross our fingers and, and really hope maybe we can get 15 maybe dare we say 20 filters and with one big offering we raise enough money to buy 200 I don't know how many filters we bought all together a couple of thousand for sure and that just blows me away God whispered into our committee and said, you're going to cover the entire nation of Liberia with clean water. And we're on pace to do that. And you want to know something really cool? We, uh, uh, at least in my heart and my mind in prayer, was like once we've covered that, that place with uh, filters, the next step is we should start digging wells. And right now, the, our first well is being dug as we speak. Isn't that glorious? I want to tell you another personal story that might freak some people out a little bit. I don't know. But here we go. Are you ready? I was at another church. This is my first church out of seminary. And I was uh, walking back from church to the parsonage. And I was just walking and praying. I said, Lord, this is a really great place. I could be here probably eight years. Eight years would probably be a good length of time at this church. And the Lord said to me in my spirit that it was, well, you'll be there, you'll be there five years. And uh, I have a tendency to argue with God. I don't know if you know that about me. And uh, guess how many times I've actually won an argument with God? You know, zero. <laughs> Here's where it gets weird, okay? You ready for this? Right uh, towards the fall of the year, we have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our district superintendent. They check out how are things going in ministry, and usually they ask you uh, questions such as, okay, regarding your appointment, uh, do you feel like you have to stay? Do you feel like you have to leave? Or are you open to a change? And how am I going to say to my district superintendent, hey, everything is going great at this church. We're growing. One church is building a new building. We just bought land over here. Things are going great. Oh, yeah, but by the way, God told me I'm going to move this year. So go get at that, will you? Can you see how, what a complicated, weird conversation that would be? A week before I had that appointment with my district superintendent, I got a call from my DS saying, you're going to get another call from another DS soon because you're going to have a new appointment. What I did at that moment, I hung up the phone. I turned around, fell on my knees, and buried my head in the couch in prayer. And I was just weeping. Just weeping, sobbing out loud. Not because I'm going to be moved, right? That happens in our, in our church. But because God is so faithful. 
God is always there. God made a promise and he fulfilled it. He put me in an awkward situation and then took me out of it to say, I got this. My guess is, if you search through your heart and your life, you will find examples where God has done the same thing for you. What we need to do when God moves in our lives and brings us great joy, we need to rejoice for sure, but then we need to give him all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise where it belongs. Not say that this is something that I did or I manipulated or I brought into my own life, but to give him the glory and return the favor back. Christmas is almost upon us, my friends. This is time of good news, of great joy. You don't need to make it good. It already is. All we need to do is celebrate and give him the glory. Just a few minutes, I'm going to ask us all to pray together. And when I pray together, honestly, folks, I don't know what's going on in your head and your hearts. I really don't. But what I would ask you to do is join me as we ask the Lord, Lord, this season is glorious enough already. Help me to let go of the celebration and help me just to simply celebrate. Let's pray together. Oh, most gracious and holy Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We rejoice in you, O oh Lord. And Lord, today I would hope that you would pour out your spirit upon us to give us that good news of great joy and that assurance that you really are God, that you really are here, God with us. And that is enough joy for me today. And Lord, from this point on, we surrender it all to you. We thank you. We praise you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.